Hi, Donna. Hi, how you doing? Very good, thank you. Looking forward to your class. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And hear about some interesting people today. <laughs> That's nice. It's nice to have yeah. such a variety of classes. Yes, isn't it? It's wonderful, it's just... yeah. And just, Donna, uh, Donna, you happen to cover such great subjects, art and music. Wow. I know, I'm lucky, aren't I? <laughs> how lucky am i how's everyone We're doing lucky. tonight <laughs> good all right we'll give it a few seconds for people to get in here before we get started <clears throat> the uh, variety of classes that you offer now just since what six months ago is pretty fantastic I know, because you've been with us for some time. Yes, I have. And then, every day you add more and more classes and everyone is interesting. Right. That's Can good you, to hear. Absolutely. Can you tell we're retired? <laughs> <laughs> good I watch for you, so right? much less TV now. Do you really? That's nice. I do, because I find so much interesting stuff to do and get set up. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm, oh, you know what? I still have the, uh, the waiting room on here. <clears throat> oh, and who, uh, uh, well, let's see, wait a minute. Uh, James, are you going to be co-host? Or are you already co-host? Okay. Thank you. Right, Good no problem. Donna. Hey, Carol Hello. Sue, how you doing? Let's see what the temperature is here. <laughs> <laughs> Got to check the temp. Uh, Fifty nine. You still have us beat. It, it's it's only like four to six. Oh, okay. I'm not too far away from you though. <laughs> All right. Let's see. I guess. We, hey, hey, Christine. Good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. I know. I was just thinking the same thing. And actually, I was supposed to have an appointment at this time. She canceled. I thought, yeah, I get to get her art. All right. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do some art talk today. Hey. All righty. Well, why don't we get started? Because we have quite a few people to chat about today. Want to welcome everyone to get set up. Seniors teaching seniors about technology. We also have classes like this tonight. We're going to be talking about famous women in art history. I love the free Kahlo, one of my favorites. Oh, uh, yeah. She, yep. She's on the list here. Did you get to the exhibit? No, no, I haven't. It has one more mm. month. I got notice. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, maybe I should go. Um, so I want to welcome everyone. I'm your guide tonight. Uh, my name is Donna. And we, this session is being recorded. If you wish to get a copy of the recording, you can email help at getsetup.io. And we're not, we don't get paid to promote these artists tonight. <laughs> no, no kickbacks. <laughs> Most of them are dead. <laughs> All right. So we're going to learn a little bit about each of these women's lives, uh, the works that made them famous, and discover some of the museums, if they have them, that they have their works in. So does anybody have a favorite? I know Frida's a favorite. Any Anyone else have some favorites that they like? Uh, Mary uh, Cassatt. Mm -hmm. Yep, Cassatt. She's on the list too. Grandma Moses. <laughs> Grandma Moses. <laughs> well, yeah, she, she did what, the flat Americana type work. That's right, yeah, yeah. I like yeah. Uh, Georgia O'Keeffe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and her, uh, has anyone been to her museum? In Santa Fe, yeah, yeah, yes. yes. That's a that's a nice uh, nice visit there to go to. All right, so let's uh, let me find my slides. Here we go. All right, first one up. Has anyone ever heard of this lady? No, no, no. no. Oh. no. unfortunately, well. that's why we're here. <laughs> All right, you know what? Renaissance. Hmm. This Renaissance painter, she worked as a court portrait painter and she studied informally. Now, at this period of time in the Renaissance, women, first of all, couldn't go to an art school. 
So that's why we say studied informally, because at one point she went to Rome, she met Michelangelo and um, was able to study under him for a couple of years. They uh, got to know each other. And uh, she was famous during her during her life when she was living, which is really unusual too. the fact that, you know, she could be famous while she was alive. And so she studied under Michelangelo. She could not do, you know, because women couldn't go to the art schools, they couldn't study um, drawing anatomy, which was really an important subject for them to study at that time, because all the frescoes had all those nudes and everything that they were painting (laughs) all over the place. Um, So they couldn't do that. So they wouldn't get commissioned to do anything fancy like that. So they were stuck doing portraits pretty much. Uh, So she worked as a court portrait. She worked for Philip II. Uh, But she started a different thing and and they call them informal portraits because normally the portraits were very formal at this time. And she did these informal ones. Here's a picture of her with her siblings. It's, this is three children and a dog. She used a lot her family a lot in the portraits. She was really known for um, being able to do faces really well. Um, and, you know, the, the kids, the animals. Another famous portrait is this one here. This is her sisters playing chess. And she kind of throws everything into this portrait. She's got the leaves. You can see the, the you know, the, the art detail that she puts into the leaves. She's got a little landscape back here. She's got mountains. She has different generations of faces here, different ages that she's doing. And she was really good at doing the textiles. Her, um, her textile work was so good that the male artist would frequently refer to her artwork when it came time to uh, do the gowns of the queens and all the different stuff. Let's see if we can pull up um, some of the work here. I can show you some of her pictures. There's that. This is cool. I mean, look at the detail she's got, especially on this one here. You can see the texture in the cloth. Oh, yeah. It's just so vibrant. Um, Yeah, all the cloth. You you see how it just pops. She's just spent so much detail on the text, you know, the textiles. And in the background, she she goes all the way back in the painting. She's got all the landscape going on here. This is a miniature self-portrait. This is in the Boston Museum of Fine Arts. Mm -hmm. This is her mother, 1557. How do you say her name? Uh, (laughs) I think it's Anguissol, something like that. Anguissol, because I don't think you do the A at the end with this one. In Italian, you usually do, but you don't think this one you do? You know, I I listened to it and I couldn't hear the A at the end. So I don't know. I'm not good with Italian and French, so... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, I know that in a because I've studied Italian. I thought you always said the a. Where in French, oh. you don't usually say the last word. Oh, so. you know, maybe I heard the French pronunciation. That could I, be possible. Hmm. Yeah, I studied Italian too. I would. My best okay. guess is Anguissola. Anguissola, Anguissola. Okay. sounds That's really good. The accent. It's a very <laughs> it's, un, it's a very unusual um, Italian. It's uh, very pretty though. It sounds so important. Oh, yeah, of course. They all do. That's why I like Italian. <laughs> here's another one. I like Italian food. <laughs> now, here's an example of the, look at the artwork on this, mm. this portrait here. And this is why the, male, the males, <laughs> they would refer to her paintings to get ideas of how are you going to do, you know, the, uh, the fabrics to get ideas of how she, you know, she does this. Donna, her detail. Hey, look at this. Her look detail at this thing. is unbelievable. And mm-hmm. it's amazing. We're all, I'm sure all of us are hearing about her for the first time. But yeah. the detail is, and it's all painting, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. 
Donna, did you say um, there's a certain museum where this collection is, or is this just from a variety of places? Oh, she's all over the place. Um, hmm. She's, uh, in fact, I think I have a, um, a slide that shows all the areas that she's oh. in. She's all over the world. She, she did about 50 works. Jeez, never heard of her. Mm. Now look at this. Nice. Beautiful. You know, what's really amazing, too, is that a king hired her. I mean, think about mm -hmm. that. Yeah, she, yeah. I mean, she, she worked for a king. Right. But yeah. how many kings would consider or even give a woman <laughs> a chance, you know, a painter? I mean, that, exactly. is, that says yes. volumes. That says volumes that he oh. had that much faith and confidence mm -hmm. in her skill. Well, uh, the one thing with her, I believe her and her... Um, she didn't really come from a wealthy family, but her father really believed that they should learn the arts because everyone was supposed to learn the arts back at this time, um, you know, to be a good person. I guess they wanted everyone to learn the arts, but the girls, you could only go so far yet, you know. So um, with her, I think because of her dad's connections, she was able to um, get some, you know, training on the side. <laughs> but the she, king must have seen some of her work Oh, yeah. To, to, and decide, my God. And that last self-portrait of her that you just showed, mm -hmm. it sort of reminded me a little bit of Mona Lisa's face. When this you one. look at yeah. it, just slightly, the, the way she did the face, the coloration, even the look. And the eyes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The eyes so just I, pop out. So I think the king probably somehow got to, maybe Leonardo da Vinci showed the work to him. Well, Michelangelo, okay. too. You oh, know, Michelangelo, he was, excuse me, Michelangelo. You know, so. he was really good with drawing the human form and everything. So, um, you know, maybe when she was studying with him, too, she was. But, I mean, she's really good with the faces, the eyes looking at you. And this is um, her when she was 92. Hmm. Here's another one, the Princess of Portugal. Imagine ladies having yeah. to wear that much stuff. Uh, I'm already sweating just thinking I of it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even wear a sweater anymore. <laughs> Here's another oh. one here. So she that's. Lived, she lived a long time. She did. You know, she really did. She had a, a good long life. And uh I, you know, she was famous during her lifetime, which is so unusual for artists, really, male or female. So many of them don't get anything. Yeah. All right. And she had, again, these are all the galleries she's in. She's all over the place. She's in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. She's in Berlin, Madrid, Milan, Milwaukee, <laughs> Naples, <laughs> Siena, Vienna. <laughs> Well, Donna, you are doing an amazing service today, bringing this to the attention of mm -hmm. the world. All right, next one. Has anyone heard of her? No. 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 Oh, no. Karen has. Very much. In our, yes. our, our, in our museum, the, the Museum of Fine Arts Houston, we have some uh, two wonderful pieces of hers, and we yeah. studied her before. Mm. Yeah, she was a daughter of a painter. Now, that seems to be a theme with some of these ladies, because you have an advantage if you're the daughter of a painter, because you have access to a studio. You learn the craft from your dad <laughs> since you can't go to school. So that does give some of these women, you, you'll notice there's a few of them that are daughters, and that gives them a little leg up. But she's the broke period. Broke period's a little less stringent. You know, things are loosening up, not as bad as Renaissance. But she, painting out outside the lines, she is supposed to only be painting portraits, but she was doing biblical and mythological paintings, which were a no-no for women, just like her male counterparts. She, I guess she just decided, I'm just doing it. <laughs> and that's what she did. And she was the first woman accepted into the Fine Art Academy in Florence. Hey. So um, let's see if we've got, let me find her. <clears throat> Look at some of her paintings. Mm. Whereas this is the very famous one, the self-portrait here. And what an um, odd stance that she has for a self-portrait. Yeah. Very unusual. Mm. Yes. 
Yeah, she's actually in the act of painting because, you know, sometimes the male yeah. artists would just place themselves in a scene, but they weren't mm -hmm. painting. They were just standing there. Right, looking pretty, exactly. She's actually in the, in the uh, act of painting. That's really po powerful. Now, yeah. the story with her is that um, they believe she, ha she was raped by a fellow artist at one point. So sometimes her paintings have a little darkness to it. So that, you know, that will comes through in her, some of her work. And typically women were responsible for the rape. There it is. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, amazing. so I'm glad she got to paint to get that out. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, look what's in the basket on this one. There's a head in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you wonder whose head I is think, that? I think that's the story. Oh, that's the, the Judith story. one. Yes. Judith, Judith and Hella Furness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, the detail and the way she does the color, it doesn't even look like a painting. Now, this is very um, interesting picture because Caravaggio did this picture. Okay. Let me see if I can find it. I just want to show you something. This is kind of interesting. Um, that's her. Let me look up. Um, wow. She does have violence. <laughs> yeah, no, this is, um, wow. I'm trying to look up. This is the painting, Judas slaying. Okay, here we go. Now I have to find, hold on a second. Let me. Let me find the, <clears throat> I want to show you uh, what Caravaggio did. Mm -hmm. He did the same painting. And it's an interesting, the interpretation between a man and a woman. I just want to show you this part here. I just got to cue up his, his uh, painting. See if I can find it. I thought I had it, and it turned out it, it wasn't the, that link. Oh, here it is. Yeah, here it is. Here we go. Okay. So let me go back. So we're looking at this one, right? Right. Do you see this? This is her interpretation because you're you're beheading someone, so it's got to take two women to do this, <laughs> right? Carvaggio. This was his interpretation. Like she's going to be way off to the side, just going like. I mean, this, she doesn't look like she'd be strong enough to do this. It's kind of interesting the way the, the, the uh, man, like he didn't even think of the fact that this would be physically impossible. Mm. It's not even realistic. So I just thought that was kind of interesting uh, where her portrayal is probably more realistic where there, there's two women, you know. I kind of like this. I like the, uh, the loot. Mm. And she looks her. That's her. She's, yeah, wow. that's her. I mean, so not only is she a painter, but I mean, look at all these are all self portraits. Yeah. Yeah. What is she doing? Oh. Oh, you want to see that one again? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> now, remember, she's painting like the guys. So she's doing mythological stories, Greek stories. She's doing these stories just like the guys are doing at the time. But it looks so. like she may be taking the stories where the woman is the winner. <laughs> exactly. Yes, you got it, Karen. Bingo. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing with her. The woman's in, in, the, uh, in control. Mm -hmm. So you can see that with her. So I have an idea why she wasn't displayed. Men did not want to see violence towards them. Exactly. Yeah. Or, or, or put her, that they, put her Go ahead. <laughs> they didn't want women portrayed in that manner because. Oh uh, no. I mean, uh, yeah, because women are supposed to be more frail and. Exactly. <laughs> and they felt threatened by her uh, skill. Mm -hmm. Oh Fellow yeah, and she's good. Yeah. She's exactly. Good. They felt very threatened that a woman could, could do mm -hmm. as well as they could. Yep, definitely. Lucretia. 
Mm. Mary Magdalene. Her women are tortured. Most of her women are mm-hmm. not happy women. They're very no. tortured in either self-tortured. I think she's committing suicide. Oh, not her. La- Lucretia was. Lucretia, yeah. She was committing suicide. But the colors mm. are just mm. amazing for that century. The yeah. colors are brilliant and her detail is just unbelievable. Now, did you have time to read, Donna, who she studied under? If she studied under anybody that we would well, know? Well, she was a daughter, dad. Her, oh. her dad was an uh, accomplished painter, so he learned. she learned probably from him. I'm going to see if she studied. Yeah, she just learned from the workshop. Let's see if she... I don't really see anything. Um, I don't have anything in my notes about her, where she studied. But she's got a lot of different works here. And again, she's painting just like the guy. She's telling the biblical stories, the little bit of mythology, you know, Greek mythology, all the stories that they were painting at the time. She's, She's right in there. Donna, do you know if any of these women have displays in the Metropolitan Museum in New York? Um, well, I can't right off the top of my head think of one, but I'm sure someone may be possibly. Well, okay. definitely the later on. These early ones, you know. All right. All right. So there we go. That's her. All right, the next one. Let's see. Name that tune. Do you, eh, anybody know her? No. Is she Dutch? Yes, she is Dutch from the Netherlands. Just based on the name. This is her, the happy couple. She was the first woman admitted to the Painters Guild. Of course, I spelled it wrong. In Harlem, that's in Netherlands. She mm. did still life and portraits. But she has quite a story here because after she died, her works got passed off to the men. They actually covered over her signatures. And some of these paintings were in the Louvre. They were on display on the walls in the Louvre, and they had to take them all down, scrape off the male name that was there, and restore them back. <laughs> they did that in the 1800s. So for a couple hundred years, other male artists <laughs> were getting credit for her work. And the big one was Franz Hals. Is anyone familiar with him? Yeah. He looks, remember the name. Look, they look a lot look. alike. Yes. Yeah. So you look at her work and I'm going to put Franz up here yeah. only because he's got a couple of paintings. You can kind of see. Where's the one? This one. They do faces very similar to each other. Yeah. Where's the one of it? Did you learn in your research? Yeah, that's the bingo, bingo, this one. Donna, did you learn in your research how they uncovered that to know that they were actually hers? No, that's, (laughs) no, I I didn't dig down on that story. That would be a good story, though, wouldn't it? Yeah, because, you know, there were no photographs. There was no way of, especially for that long, that would be an interesting thing. I'm wondering if the one of the museums figured it out or something. Hmm. You know, because now look at the face. Well, not maybe not this one, but some of the faces with Hunt, you could see how they got confused. Oh, yeah, here. Right. So when you, you look at you compare them, you can kind of see how it could happen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, um, oh, like this one. That's Hans. That's Judith. Wow. Wow. So very interesting with mm-hmm. her story. So this is more of uh, Judith. <clears throat> oh, I just read something that. Um, Did you find out? Well, one of the yeah, I, I was. I'm very curious, and I'm gonna <laughs> get to the this bottom of this <laughs> further. But uh, one thing said that the Louvre Museum in Paris, and in, in 1893, they found Leicester's monogram under the fabricated ah. signature of Halls. Wow! And so there you go. They put two and two together. One of the one of the doors that was open to the mystery. Mm-hmm. So, you know what it could have been is they were cleaning it. 
Oh, yeah. that's true. Because they have we to do that. cleaning it and maybe that's how it, they noticed it was a, a layer on top of a layer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some and very it's good that art historian. Mm-hmm. Makes you yeah. wonder how many more <laughs> paintings out there have been uh, the same thing happened. Yeah, because, <laughs> yeah. you know, you think it would be pretty easy. You know, she dies, all her artwork's there, and you're like, hey, <laughs> I'll put my name on it. <laughs> yeah, this this guy here, look, they look a lot alike. Yeah, her, her faces there. are so distinctive. She in no way reflects Van Gogh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, I mean, she knew Franz, too. Mm. You know, her husband knew him. So they were contemporaries. Um, you know, maybe they possibly studied under some, the same person at some point, because they do have some, there's a lot of similarity in their drawing. Her faces the have so much character. They're very jolly. Yes. Maybe I've had a few. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. no, they look a little like they're partying, don't they? <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh. mm. There's the guy with the loot again. So that's an interesting lady. Wow. Fascinating. You can add to your list. To mm -hmm. You can do more research on. This next one, I think, possibly. You guys know about her, Elizabeth? No, don't nope. know her. Uh oh, Marie Antoinette's buddy. Yeah, I've heard of her father though, but I think mm -hmm. wasn't he? Um, yes, she's a daughter of a painter. You yeah. know, that's yeah, it helps. <laughs> you gotta have connections back know, then. And you know, yeah. I studied French painting, and her name never came up <laughs> in any French oh. painting so class. Is, <laughs> is she French? Is she from France? Yeah. Anna? So yes, yeah. Oh, Wendy, we should have you do a, give us some French uh, a painting class. Listen, in is. my younger days, I aspired to be an art historian and took classes, but I don't. You know, things things I remember, but I remember his name, Lebrun. You know, he's quite oh. famous, but I didn't. But there you go. You know, women get shut out of art history. It's been very. Well, she had like a thousand portraits and landscape paintings. That's what she did, and she was Marie Antoinette's portrait painter. Kind of a short-term job <laughs> 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 because she was there when the French Revolution happened. Of course, you know goodness, everyone got. Did. She got hauled off with them, and mm. she did not. But they, she would. They didn't kill her, but she was in exile. So she spent her time in exile in Italy. And the thing for her was, you know, usually when you're doing the portraits for the, the royalty and everything, they're very stiff portraits. You know, they're very formal. She did more natural, relaxed portraits. So that really considered, you know, that was considered revolutionary at that time that she did that. But well, she did have to go into exile. <laughs> we are so lucky that they all did self-portraits. Yes. Yes. That's her in a straw hat. Mm. Mm. She looks pretty young there, though. But again, the detail. Look at the feathers. Look mm -hmm. at the clothing. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, because, you know, when you look at the, you know, now when you think about the men, when they do clothing, I just don't remember it being quite this, you know, this stunning. And also here she is holding her paints. This is a, a yeah. I find this interesting. I love oh, it. Do you? Yeah. That these, that so far, two women have been have um, painted themselves in the act of their their craft there so is that normally the guys don't do that right i haven't seen it very often mm -hmm. to be honest with you i see them in paintings but they're usually you know you wouldn't even know it was them but the right. fact they they it, it's really a, a, a self-declaration i am a painter right telling us. i just find that very powerful mm -hmm. Well, that's probably why they, they do that themselves painting. So they, you know, so that it's believable, I guess. Look at that neck thing, ladies. And that I hat, know. All of, and how tight that dress is. And it looks like velvet. So oh uncomfortable. My, she's, look at, <laughs> I know she has no waist. Oh my God. Thanks God. <laughs> we don't live in that day. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> 
without air conditioning. They and he knows, no and, and she had, um, she did have some training because she was Marie Antoinette's portrait painter. That let her into some art academies. That that they gave her a little golden ticket. This is oh, Marie Antoine Antoinette and her children. Mm. Does anybody know enough about French history to know if they killed their children? Ooh, I don't know. Wendy? Uh, no, that was never discussed in any French. That's a great question. Just was never addressed in a French history class I took. So don't know. Or, or is it something they didn't want to tell you about? Yeah. You know, yeah, who knows? I don't remember seeing pictures of children being marched to the guillotine, though. Mm -hmm. They were probably imprisoned or something. Oh, they probably went off to jail, like, you know, with everyone else. Yeah. Look at those That's a good colors. question, though. Whatever did happen to those kids? Yeah. <clears throat> Maybe. Hmm. And these portraits are very relaxed. Yeah. The ones that I've seen her do. You can see it. Oh, this is her grave. Oh. <clears throat> it's pretty. Oh, this is stunning. Mm. That blue, look at the shimmer. Mm -hmm. Nice. You know, something just occurred to me is that um, I think that in an art history class, they didn't identify that it was a woman. I have a feeling that they would just say, oh, that's LeBron. But they never, no one ever said, hey, this was a female painter. Oh, that's interesting. So you probably have heard of her name, but no one ever said her first name. Yeah. Well, yeah, a lot of women, they just used initials. They signed by initials or they used a man's name on the painting. Right. She really has got that shimmer down. Mm. Satin. The satin look, right? She made sure that say this is satin. Oh, wow. Now, that's an interesting. Yeah, he looks very tall. <laughs> Doesn't he look really tall? It's like a giant. Well, what's interesting, though, is it looks like the painter is on the ground and she's looking up at him. Like yeah, her. that could be. Yeah. It's really interesting how she has that perspective you know, to make him look even bigger, but it looks like she's down at his feet, painting, mm -hmm. looking, looking above. Maybe. And again, the sat the satin or look there. There's another self portrait with her daughter. Now that's a cute little outfit. Mm. But also look at the background. Is that a volcano going on? <laughs> Not really? Well, here we go. Let's take one more picture before we flee. Uh -huh. <laughs> Isn't that it does. It looks like you're right. It looks like a volcano. Okay, kid. Let's stand just a couple more hours and then we got to go. <laughs> but look at all that detail. The lace. Oh, I know. I mean, the lace is amazing. That I just. Oh. Go ahead, Karen. That volcano is probably signifying Naples or somewhere in Italy. Yeah. Probably going to yeah. inherit that part of the country uh, is probably um, where, you know, he's going to inherit that particular part of, the, of Italy. Mm. Or, That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Just, with a name <laughs> like Francesco, mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. has to be either Vesuvius or Etna. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Yep. I just I just looked up Marie Antoinette's children. Three of them died in childhood before the revolution, and one daughter survived and apparently went on to marry someone. So she does have um, oh. survivors. 
Wow. Okay. Well, that's good to hear. Well, I mean, not that they died young, but But they 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 might not have made it through the revolution. Exactly. (laughs) Not a good thing. Now, look at the contrast between her. There it is again. There's your volcano. And and the woman before who was killing men. This, Mm -hmm. this, (laughs) This carefree woman, very happy versus the woman who's killing men. And carrying their heads around in her purse. Volcanoes. <laughs> <A little basket. laughs> Those volcanoes. That's <laughs> so true. It must be Italy. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Good time in Italy. <laughs> um, look at oh, this looks like a waterfall. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Now yeah. now, Christine, you're having me look in the back in the background now for of the course. volcanoes look going on. Look at um, Ooh, this is the pretty. Mona Lisa, the background. See, these backgrounds remind me of the background of Mona Lisa. Yeah. Now look at this dress. This is something too. Mm. It's that rich is that blue is so rich on. Mm. And expensive. That's indigo. Oh, there you go. If it's that dark blue, mm-hmm. that would be very expensive uh, um, with co- color dye. Right. My yeah. Goodness. Well, this princess can fly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Liechtenstein. Mm. Well, that's because the volcano. Did you see all this? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's flying with the volcano. Oh boy. Yeah. So her. Yeah, she definitely. Her paintings are a little more uh, uplifting than the other one. <laughs> Much more whimsical. <laughs> more and whimsical. Almost gla- glamour shots. Well, it is that what it, it's that Rococo style, so it's very you know theatrical, and you can definitely see that. Oh, look at the hair! No, that's a oh, that's a uh, scarf on her head. Yeah, looks like it. Yeah, first I mm. thought it was her hair. Well, but so all it these... looks like she got around because this is a Russian princess, so maybe yes. she worked in. Um, and this is after the French Revolution, so maybe she. Right. Spent, oh my God, Tolstoy! Maybe she spent some time in. Ooh. Uh, in Russia Ooh. after the revolution. Oh, she might have, because so- she couldn't go back to France for a while. So she had to go and get, you know, other gigs. You know, and keep else. in mind how limited communication was. I mean, there was no way to communicate except by word mm-hmm. of mouth. Exactly. <laughs> About volcano. Send up, maybe that's the uh, <laughs> sending up the smoke mouth signal. Signals. <laughs> you know, another princess. A, I wonder if um, how do I say? she became popular by word of mouth because the women would say, oh, I want her to paint me. You know, they would see their their mm-hmm. friends painting by her. Go, Oh, I've got to have. Well, her paint my she had Marie Antoinette. So at that point, you know, she got into the art academies and I would imagine she had people just wanting her to come and do their portraits. So she probably just wandered all over the place. Mm. You'd think they'd yeah. be superstitious if she painted Marie Antoinette. We might lose our <laughs> I heads. I know. Really? Yeah, that last one lost her head. All <laughs> right. So she's got, she still has a lot. She has a lot here. So we're going to move on to the next one because we could mm. spend all day with Elizabeth here. Mm. All right. Next one up. This is like, name that. Let's see. Name that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any, anyone know her? Nope. nope. Must Uh-oh. be French. Was- yep. <laughs> Father was a painter. <laughs> yep. Yep, exactly. Father was a painter. We see a theme. Uh, but she did large format paintings that featured animals. Ooh. So she was into the animals. Um, let me show some pictures of hers. Rosa. Let's see what they have Rosa here. Bono, Bono. There's the painting that in a larger scale, so you can see what it looks like. Uh, she imagine. exhibited she exhibited regularly at the Paris Salon. And she was she had success in the United States too in Britain. Well, somebody asked about the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Here you go. Here's one. Here's one at the Met, the yep. horse fair. Oh, look at that. She that must almost... have like horses better than people. God, that <laughs> looks like a that people. looks like a photo. I was just going to say, that looks like photo realism. I would have said that was a photo, but no, it isn't. It's one of her paintings. That's amazing. Yeah, she spent a lot of time just sketching animals in motion. 
And she would go out in men's dress in the mid 1850s because she said, Hey, I'm working with the animals. But, um, but she was a lesbian, which was, and out, she was out too. So she was very, she was a very progressive woman. Wow. She'd wear trousers and loose blouses because, you know, well, look at where she's going to sit here out in the field with the cows. Gorgeous. <laughs> Way ahead of her time. Way ahead of her time. Mm. Some of these, I mean, it's I, it's just amazing because some of these I'm looking at, I'm thinking this is a, a photo. Exactly. Look at in the background. Here. The, map, the mountains are beautiful. That's amazing. But look at the difference between what she did. She went outside in very difficult environments. Yeah, she had to climb up there probably. And men, <laughs> that's what they're, versus these, the other women who are all painting inside in mm -hmm. very closed environments. Yeah. This is so interesting, the contrast. Oh my God, this is a, a bunch of sheep. Oh my goodness, that's fantastic. Changing pastures, they're moving. Oh, oh, so you have to go on the boat, load up everyone on the boat and go to the other pasture on the other side. And mm. those sheep could not have been happy. No, they don't look happy. Oh, look at that. She has a little... That's pretty. A little painting in, on her palette. Hmm. Well, clearly she was a nature lover. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, that says volumes right there. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah. She didn't want to paint. She's not interested really in painting the people. Oh, that's pretty. Study of a dog. Yeah. Mm. Study of a dog. 1860s. It's so um, bright. Wow. The horse is there. Mm. Bit of a bull. Buffalo mm. Bill. Yeah, she's pretty amazing, huh? Gosh. Wild oh. Bill Cody was, yeah. I wonder, well, she must have been in America, but who knows? He traveled with the world too, anyway. Scotland. Yeah, she's just uh, <laughs> wild boars in the snow. Dear, yes, you just a little of everything. Oh, wow! Mm. Oh, my gosh! Hi. Oh, it's a wait, wait, that's not a horse, <laughs> that's her so studio, that's, that's her art studio. Oh, oh, that probably is. Yeah, you're right, that is probably a is a studio. Oh, yeah, there you go. That looks like northern France. Wearing the Legion of Honor. Mm. Wow. Oh, wow. That's, that's pretty big. Yeah. To have that. Impressive. Oh, that's her later on in life. What a great photo. Look at that. You want to look at it again? There you yes, go. Yes. She's shows just chilling. How uh, individualistic she is, and she doesn't care. She's like, you know what? I just came back from the pasture. I got horse, you know what, on my feet, and I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I wonder if she knew Monet. That would be neat because they were painting at the same time. Yeah, mm. well, let's see. Did she? She might have, huh? Yeah, it would be interesting. She hung around at the, the salon. Yeah, then she must have known Monet and maybe Renoir and... Rembrandt, well, not Rembrandt. Yeah. Maybe she, uh... all right, let's check out the next one. Mm, I, know her. Uh, I know her. Now yeah. you know her. Yeah, all right. Yes, her. I do. Lady at her toilet. <laughs> yeah, I love that. See, because she well, was with Monet Cezanne, Renoir, and Degas. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. And because uh, she focused on domestic stuff, so you'll see domestic. Yeah, and that pictures. actually looks like a Degas. It does. Right. Right. And she did pastels, watercolor. She's married to some famous artist. I don't know who. But um, yeah, she got married to. Let me show you some of her pictures. And we'll, um, let's see. But yeah, her style is very Renoir-ish. 
Let's see what we have for pictures here. And yeah, Mary, um, Mary Cassette style. She yes. had a, that's what I would have even guessed, Mary Cassette. Oh, she was, um, um, what is it, Edouard Manet? He was, uh, oh. she was close to him and she married his brother. His brother. Oh. Apparently, the story was, is that she really was in love with Monet, uh, Manet, the uh -huh. painter, but he but, was sickly and um, she ended up marrying her, his brother or something. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Now, because she worked in watercolors and mm -hmm. pastels, people considered her work too feminine. Because <laughs> that looks like Van Gogh. Yeah, that does. It does, doesn't it? But no one would call him feminine. That's right. Yeah, you know, what these women had to go through. Yeah, see, you know. a man they painted her. Painted yep. Mm -hmm. yep. And Museo, I've, so I've seen it because it's at the Musée d'Orsay. <clears throat> 1894. Mm. The Sisters National Gallery of Art. Oh, that's gorgeous. You know, she struggled to be taken serious. And in her journal, she said, I don't think there has ever been a man who treated a woman as an equal. And that's all I would have asked for. For I know I'm worth as much as they. Little did she know it would take centuries to have even close to being equal. Oh, I know. Geez, we're not even there yet. Nope. <laughs> Just keep stepping backwards. Well, she was in New York City. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 1872. Wow. This is in Cleveland Museum of Art. Mm -hmm. mm. That almost looks like um, a portrait that Monet did when his wife died. I don't mm -hmm. know if you've seen that, the picture he painted after she died. Wow, Brooklyn, boy, she's well represented. Yeah. Yeah, she's she's all over. Hanging the laundry out to dry. Washington, D.C. Boy, that's a woman's painting. That is. Well, domestic stuff, right? Yes, domestic. <laughs> hmm. I wonder, she must have known Degas because this is, I would have just paused. Oh, yeah, Degas, yeah. Oh, and the Montmartin. Because she was the first one to exhibit with them. Did I not read that part? Yeah, she was she was the joined the first they had an impressionistic exhibit outside of the other exhibits because that's at the, when it started. And yeah, so she knew to go. And she did she exhibited with them. So yeah, that's pretty good. She must have studied with him. Yeah, because you could see, see and, the and that one was definitely a Manet. This one right here. Yeah, yeah. and I've been to mm -hmm. that museum. Which is mostly Monet's. Oh, that looks so much like Monet. Yes, and it and Renoir, and Renoir too. Mm -hmm. when they Renoir. Together. Yes, you can see they were all there chatting and you know exchanging. That's probably their... what it was because <clears throat> many I've times seen... painting painting side by side. Many of them, you know, yeah. the same yeah. Yeah. Dallas. Hmm. Yeah, yeah she is happy. all over, isn't she? Mm hmm. That really looks like Cassatt. Mm. Pretty. Mm. Karen, have you been to the Chicago Art Institute? Yes. Oh my God, that's the best place I think in the country. I, that, yeah, uh, my definition of the best museum, which may be for y'all too, is usually the, either the one I'm at or the most <laughs> recent one, because it's my <laughs> so best true, memory. Isn't it? Uh, no, the uh, Chicago Art Institute has it, the most Monets, though, and the most Impressionists, I think. 
fabulous. Yep. Yeah, mm. this is good. Manet. Well, Manet sure liked to paint her. It's interesting yes. how, how you. this. Yeah. Yeah. I it's think he really how, liked her. <laughs> it's I think he liked her. It's interesting how this female um, art, uh, artist became quite a favorite um, uh, uh, model for Manet. Mm -hmm. Was he married with, to yeah. someone else at that time? I thought I read something. Possibly he I was with it up. someone. I don't remember. I don't remember. Um. Um. Mm. Yeah, not too sure. All right. God, that's beautiful. A lot of good stuff with her. Next up, of course, oh, Karen. Uh, you're familiar with Mary. Mm. Even though she was born in the U.S., she uh, Philadelphia. Lived, her, lived her whole life in France. And she was in that impressionistic group, too. And she did pastels and, and yes. um, you know, made feminine stuff. <laughs> <laughs> as the guys would say <laughs> but she showed a lot of women as caretakers and she did support equality for women because that kind of started to become a thing with suffrage and everything Manet was married in 1863 so apparently That's... he was married when he was um doing that artwork yeah <laughs> that of his sister-in-law yeah that's that's what I thought I had read too that even though I think they had a thing for each other but mm -hmm. you know she was, uh, he was taken. Hey, oh, oh, go back, Donna. That was interesting. Oh, that uh, poor, uh, photograph. There you go. Cassatt, yeah. seated in a chair with an umbrella. Mm -hmm. The only photograph for which she ever posed. Oh. Mm. She mm. was something else. I read her life story. She lived to be, I think, in her 90s mm -hmm. um, and was um, quite independent. She was mm -hmm. born in Philadelphia of a very wealthy family. And they were very, you know, opposed to her uh, going off to be an artist. But um, mm -hmm. she won the family over and then they paid for her <laughs> to go to France. And she never really came back except to visit. That was it, huh? Yep. Well, she was surrounded by all those impressionists. Yeah. And my it understanding was she was responsible for bringing all that impressionist art to the Chicago Art Institute. It was because of her they got it so cheap. Oh, really? That's oh. right. She, she had befriended the Havemeyers or some very wealthy family in Chicago. I think their name was Havemeyer. And she introduced them to the Impressionist artwork, which was new to everyone, and, and convinced and, them to purchase it and buy it. That's right. And bring so it back. So they got them. it really cheap. And now it's worth millions. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh. It was because of her. The, so Donna, have you ever been to the Chicago Art Institute? I haven't. I've never been you to Chicago other than you, flying in and out. You yeah. must go there. It's worth the trip. I've heard it's really great. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. All right. So that's Mary. Let's move on to another one here. We're not even like halfway through this uh -oh. list. <laughs> we got to do number two, Donna. We want no, more. Well, that's we don't right. want to do number two right now. Part one. Part <laughs> no, but we, number uh, two for you to schedule a class. Number two, women in. You want to do a number two? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Look at us yeah. how excited we are. Yeah. I mean, we're barely at it, it, you know in the 1900s yet. Well, women deserve it. Women artists deserve more than one session. Well, well yeah, we can, we can, we, we do, can do a number four. two. Whatever right. you need, Donna, just put in. They're going to give you all the classes you need. Uh -huh. <laughs> They're going to do it. Yeah, because we are only. Yeah, I'm only halfway through my slides. There you go. <laughs> because of course you're going to have conversation. This is important to talk oh, about. Oh yes, exactly. Yes. I like no, how she fun. did this silver. Ooh. Hmm. 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 Look at that. Oh, when you turn it upside down, it's a sketch of her father. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you can see the face and everything. Huh. Wow. Poor dog. Mm -hmm. mm. Now that has definitely has a Monet look to it too. Yes. Hmm. 
Hmm. Woman standing holding a fan. Hmm. Yeah, her stuff's all over the place too. Isn't looking it? at these museums. Mm-hmm. That museum is in Fort Worth, Texas. Hmm. Reading, reading Le Figaro. That's reading Le Figaro. Newspaper. The newspaper. I think that's her mother. Does it say Mary Cassatt's mother? Yes. No. No, it says by. It's a collection. I think it's her mother. Hmm. No. Oh, this is a great shot. This is her. Oh, de Goss. Ah. This is her seated. Wow. Yeah. Holding cards. So are they playing cards? Yeah. This is how to see they all hung out. <laughs> they were having a game night. They sure did. She hated it later and wrote to the her dealer. I don't want anyone to know that I posed for it. Mm, interesting. Mm. Hmm. Sounds like she was very c- kind of not a recluse or she doesn't look happy well maybe she lost the card game yeah <laughs> degas was cheating <laughs> she's so, another so here's how she'd rather oh. see herself mm-hmm. hmm. Oh, this is little girl in the blue arm shoe. Yes. Look at the dog. Boy, that looks so realistic, that dog. Actually, they both look very realistic. Gee, what, what's up with the covers? <laughs> I think that has to do with uh, the whole thing about Japanese design in, in, oh. at that time. And they were all very into Japanese art and design. And then I think they were starting to show it in their, their pictures just to show oh. that they were doing the latest thing you know right that was trendy. the latest interior decorating <clears throat> the latest trends yes the latest trends and this is the child's bath very famous very famous and you'll see japanese even in the back in the wallpaper uh, that looks so realistic my god mm. not mother and child before a pool mm. Dry point and aqua tint on laid paper. Hmm. Anybody know what that is? Nope. Not really. <laughs> looks like thin watercolor, but I don't yeah, know. it looks like it's watered down or something. Uh-huh. Dry point. I don't know. Thin. Print. Oh, Museum of Fine Arts Houston. That's me. Yeah, that's yeah. you. Yep. You'll have to look for that next time. I will have to look for that. I don't think it's on display now, but yeah. What is that? Under the That's horse. Under the horse chestnut tree. Thank you. 1898. Got it. Huh. I've never seen that. Huh. This one's at the Metropolitan. Mm, I've seen that. Wow. I'll have to look for that when I go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh wow. my God, that's stunning. Gorgeous woman with mm-hmm. a pearl necklace. And that's Cassatt. Yep. <laughs> wow, that's so different from the others. Most of them are so very domestic, and this is still still feminine, but she's out on the town, not hanging clothes on the line <laughs> this is where she lived in paris you know it actually so it looks does. like the building van gogh lived in which is in uh, Montmartre. which oh, I, really? I when i did my tour of paris mm-hmm. and we stopped in front of van gogh's house and it looks so much like where van gogh lived mm. i don't know what street that was this is her memorial well Oh, they put it right at on the building. Says she's a colleague of Degas. Yeah. Sicily. That's pretty. 
Oh, Crystal Bridges. That's Arkansas. Mm. Museum. Hmm. Yeah, her art's just everywhere. In the box, In the box 1879. Don, I'm going to tell you goodbye. Thank you so much. I want oh, more. Oh, we are at the end. Oh, yes, I we are. Part two. Thank so you we're gonna so have, much. We're going to have you guys. We're going to have to do a part two. Absolutely. Right. Because absolutely. Um, and you'll have to all come in, and we can go yeah. through them again. The, uh, not these. The next list. The other side. The other side of my deck of okay my PowerPoint. <laughs> Thanks, Donna. I All appreciate right. Thank this you. so much. Thank, Thank you, you much. for coming, everyone. Right. And Wonderful. Well, I'll do. I'll put in for a part two, and we can all go through the rest of them. All right, everyone. Have a good Thanks. night. Take care. Bye-bye. It was good seeing everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Great. Great. <laughs> mm.